All and right. And we're back. Welcome back to the GSL Code. A. This time I'm not joking. Chat and Son are playing. This time I'm not joking. Yes. 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 So coming up next. What? What were you saying? Oh, what? What did you just say to me? I, I didn't say it. I just said okay, yes. Okay, anyways. Coming up, we have Sheth versus San. We what do? was correcting me. I called him San. So yeah, he was like, is it San versus Sheth? I was like, no, it's San. San actually San. means mountain, I was told, and I didn't oh, know that. So we have Sheth versus the mountain. Who will triumph? Good. Did you ever watch Mulan? Versus evil. And it's like... Uh, the Black e versus white. Okay, QXC. I'm trying to make a Mulan reference. Shadow. Here, man. Versus light. <laughs> Groundhog's Day. Versus Valentine's Day. Pumpkins. <laughs> oh, you said shadows. I just wanted to say Groundhog's Day. <laughs> but I don't know if you guys remember Mulan. There's this scene where like the old guy's there and the Hun guy's there. He's got like, this giant sword. And he's like, bow. And he's like, the wind can blow, but the mountain will not bow. And he's just like, shut up, old man. I don't need your crazy, weird sayings. <laughs> and then they cut his head off. Oh, and that is San. Good multitasking and macro skills. But he's kind of weak in the early game. He is a little weak in the early game. He actually has lost to a lot of all-ins, especially in ZVP, so... That's something we've uh, we've talked a little bit about to Chef. Does uh, Chef all-in? No, like he, he doesn't. doesn't. But Chef, it, you don't put it past Chef to scout something and then make a round of speedlings and just get into the base. Yeah. Uh, he's definitely not opposed to doing stuff like that. So Sun, actually a former Code S player for quite a number of seasons here, dropped down to Code A, um, I think just in the last one? This is yeah, this first. is his first time in Code A. I would be really surprised if he doesn't make it back up and up through the up and down matches back into Code S. He's a really, really talented player. And there is it's Sean there is Simon Sheth. Creative builds and unique <laughs> keyboard location. <laughs> He actually uses his keyboard in his yep. lap. Sheth actually plays with the keyboard on his lap. There's a story, there's some reason for it. I don't remember exactly what it is. Um, and here, this is Sheth's, this is actually Sheth's only second match uh, televised in Korea. So, um, yeah. obviously, San having a lot more experience there. Yeah, he actually was really nervous in the team league, but I think now he's feeling a lot more comfortable. We, QXC and I both just kind of talked with the team before the match, saying, you know, how is he feeling? Does he feel really ready? And yeah, he feels a lot better than he did last time, so... He, he seems a little nervous right now, though, but... I gotta say, once he gets in and gets into his groove, I think he'll be fine. Yep. He seems... He's ready, he's been practicing a lot with uh, a lot of different Koreans. I think he's been playing with... Uh, a lot of different processes on Foyu. Yeah. Um, and just some other processes in general. Some processes on Prime. He's played with Oz a lot, who's definitely a really good Protoss, yeah, and... Quite good. He actually... His best matchup is ZVP, so he's yep. feeling really good about this match. Um, this is definitely probably one of the best case scenarios for Sean in the, the first round of Code A, uh, playing against a Protoss. Obviously, someone with a little less experience might have been better, but you know he's he's in his element. He's playing the race that he wants to play against, and uh, we'll just have to see how it goes. Yeah, Son, I feel like based on how Son walked in here, he's just kind of been hanging around a little bit. He's been here for a while today, and uh, every every time I get a look at him. He seems extremely confident and comfortable, so I don't think nerves are going to be an issue for him at all. Whereas Chef, you know, he's trying to get in his groove. Maybe a little bit more nervous, but it is his best matchup. Um, and, this is, and here we're taking a look at the Korean commentator for a moment. <laughs> and we do see some probes mining, so we'll be jumping into the game momentarily here. Momentarily. Um, Am I getting stuck on my chair? <laughs> maps, Crossfire, Crevasse, and Metalopolis. For the three maps yes. here. First map, obviously, Crossfire. Yep, we are on Crossfire. I'm not sure... ZVP... I don't know how... Like, We'll talk about it in a little bit when we jump into the game. All right, all right. That's Before, I just want to talk about your bandana. I think it's really nice. Do you like it? I do. All right, here we go. Jumping into here the game. Here we go! All right, up here at the top. A very solid Protoss player. On the same team as Bonbons, who played just before. He is a former Code S player. And goes by the ID. It's supposed to be a mountain, I think. I think. I, I think. think that was a mountain. It looked like a mountain. Yeah. Son. Should just put the guy from Mulan there. And here we go. In the bottom left-hand corner. The American powerhouse Zerg. Coming to Korea to compete. For the first time, Apexel. 
Chef. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually very difficult for Koreans to say his name. That's yeah. why he said very difficult beforehand. I guess the uh, the T the TH isn't a, a Korean sound. Yeah, it's very difficult. Um, SH in general is just difficult for them too. Like they're not entirely sure how to say it uh, um, because so they don't have just like a sh. They have like a she. It's, it's. I'm not gonna give you guys a Korean lesson, but. And here we see Sun being very aggressive with that probe. I. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not really feeling this. I feel like he should at least wait until the probe gets all its shields back to keep harassing. But yeah, you almost lost that probe. Um. Maybe he's just trying to get inside Sean's head a little bit. Sean, Chef, same person. Yeah. Um, I know him mostly as Chef, but you may not. Right? You now, don't. Remember, on this map, it's very difficult to fast expand as a for So we do see San is kind of getting his gate and then his core. Not he's most likely going to be doing some sort of sentry expand. Obviously, forge fast expand is very difficult when your natural is that far away. And for that very same reason, it's very difficult for Chef to justify going hatch first on this map. So that's why he's going first to expand. Which has really become the standard in PvZ right now. And here we see San doing some denying at the natural expansion of Sheth. Keeping that drone from putting down the expansion. We do see a Zealot coming out from San. Um, probably just to wall in. I'm not sure... I'm not sure if he's... No, it's not... Oh my god. Hiccuping and crazy. Does Chrono Boost, <laughs> Chrono Boost out the Zealot, gets a sentry, so he's just going to be playing defensive. Um, did he see the expansion go down? Well, he saw the Zerglings chase off his probe, so he doesn't actually know that it's down. But he did verify that Sheth was no longer mining gas, so he knows it's not going to be a, a roach all in. So at this point, he can assume that the expansion will go down. And uh, he's actually making a sentry back at home. It will be out in time to help deny these speedlings, or Zerglings, I should say. They haven't grown up into speedlings quite yet. Oh, and a Stargate. Very interesting from Sun. Um, and here. Almost pushes down the ramp. I don't. What's the probe doing? The probe is going to make a pile on the bottom of the ramp, and he's going to start building that wall up to take his nexus, or at least that's what he wants Chef to think. Yeah. So it looks like what he's doing now is he doesn't want Chef to poke up the ramp to see that the gateway wasn't building something and the core is not being chrono boosted. Basically, just denying his opponent as much information as possible uh, to keep him in the dark. Exactly. And the pylon does go down here. But Sheth's speed has finished, and he has to wait here a little bit longer because he didn't make gateways initially, made that Stargate instead, so he just doesn't have enough units to really push down the ramp quite yet. Sheth doing a good job with those early, so does end up losing one of them. And I think Sheth, if Sheth is really observant, he should know that something is a little off here. Um, the second century just came out. I feel like if he was actually doing some kind of three-gate expand, we would see a bit more in the number of units. Yeah, well, Sheth um, did just make 12 speedlings, so I think that he kind of expects some sort of Stargate play, and essentially what Sheth is doing here, he's making an Evo Chamber back at home, so he's got that, no matter what's going on, if it's DTAs, if it's Stargate, he's going to have that Evolution Chamber to make spores. Right. At the same time, he's making a bunch of speedlings so that if San's plan fails and he wants to just fall back to an expansion, it's going to be very difficult to do so. And here, Sheth does have enough speedlings to make it very hard for San to move out. And this is a pretty pretty good strategy here. Basically what he's doing is applying pressure at the front, uh, making it very hard for San to move out without revealing what he's doing. And here we see the Overlord completes kind of the web of lies that Sheth had ensnared his opponent in. He uses the Overlords from both sides, speedlings. He knows the plan now. He knows there's a Void Ray. He sees the expansion, he's got enough units to apply pressure, um, and he can make the right decisions from this point. He certainly can, and here comes the Overlord actually into the main base of San. There's not a whole lot to see that he didn't already know, but it is going to be quite helpful for him to get in there. He's yeah, going to see no robotics at the very least. I do find this a little bit questionable. I feel like he's already seen everything there is to see. The Nexus, uh, the Sentry Count, the Void Ray. Maybe he wants to see if the Stargate's building or more gateways I'm not I'm not really sure I don't yeah I think that I think that you're right he wants to see are you making more voyages are you making phoenixes are you adding a bunch of gates are you gonna pull a uh, a bonbons or rather not bonbons um, who was that <laughs> the, we have bad memory yeah uh, the Protoss he the added Protoss, seven gates who added the seven gates yeah, yeah that one that one that guy that guy that guy the seven gate Protoss that will be his new nickname. I hope we can get that in like the tooltip. <laughs> no, also known uh, the uh, the player formerly known as the Seven Gate Protoss. <laughs> it's kind of like the artist formerly known as Prince, man. 
That's what I was going for. Yeah. Thanks for picking up on that. Well, I know just some people out there, some nerds are young like us, but just didn't listen to good music back in the day. I didn't listen to that either. <laughs> I don't actually know what it's from. I actually, Prince, um, he had to change his record label. It was complicated. He couldn't use the same uh, name, so he had to change names, so he just used the artist formerly known as Prince instead uh, of using Prince. And actually, this is, this is looking really bad for Chef. All of these units just streaming down. Yeah, he actually is what? just... What's He's actually happened? just doing this off of three gates. And this happens when you start talking about Prince, things just go wrong. That and was really interesting. Uh, what I don't understand is how Shet didn't see that coming. I'm assuming he used the Void Ray to deny the Watchtowers, um, but it did feel like Shet kind of got caught unaware. Yeah, he did have the support card at the front of his base to be prepared to help with the Void Ray. That, you know, the Void Ray just does a lot of damage when it's with that army, so that's the reason why he has that support card there. And I think he just felt maybe a little bit too comfortable. I think he felt like, oh, no matter what he does, I'll be fine right now. Yeah. And the Void Ray smartly goes down here to the bottom right to check for that third base location. It's empty, though. The Shat is actually making a Spire off the two hatch. And this is actually a really good... This opening makes a lot of sense on this map. The one Void Ray, um, the third base is very far away, and you can actually see on the minimap there is something that just died to the Void Ray in the bottom right. I assume a drone. Yeah. Um, and because the third is so far away, it is quite hard for the Zorg to take that, and it's quite easy for the Protoss to deny it until those Hydras or Mutalists come out to deal with that Void Ray. And a Zealot is going to meet an unfortunate end here as he runs into a nest of Speedlings. Does get taken oh, out, but there are a lot of units here. Fielded, that would be really bad. And Chef, what is Chef looking at? Well, he's not looking at that, but um, a number of Zerglings do go down. I think he killed one sentry. And you can see both players playing a similar strategy, but with different units. That Void Ray is not controlled properly. Void Ray does go down quite easily. I don't think he expected there to be Queens off creep like that. Um, and does focus fire down his pylon so he can move out. And Blink has just finished. So we're going to see a very strong timing attack coming from uh, San here. And nine Mutalists being made. Yeah, this, I don't... Is, this is going to be kind of a funky spot. This happens a lot in this matchup where one player goes to attack and kills a third base, but the Mutas come out, and the Mutas come to the Protoss' base before he can get back, and the Protoss has to decide, do I go home, or do I just try to warp any units there and defend, and it gets really weird. And nice here. reaction by San making that pile in there again, so he's completely walled off once yep. again. And Chef knows at this point, San has to just go forward, kind of. Yeah, he can't really, He put it, he's put his Stalkers in a weird spot, he didn't go for that third base location, he's actually just gonna attack the natural. Yep. And Chef is like, well actually that makes it really easy to defend because all my units are here. <laughs> and he's just gonna keep falling back to this ramp, using good force oh, fields. Oh, good force fields, San walling off a lot of uh, circlings there. Yeah, and and there's so many Stalkers, Chef just cannot engage with those mutas just yet. One good thing here, Chef, I think he was able to kill at least one or two sentries. Whittling down that sentry count will make speedlings much more effective. Um, and one good thing, at least that came out of that engagement, is the force fields did prevent San from moving forward immediately. That's he true. just killed, killed his, his own stalker. stalker. It yeah. happens when okay. you're attacked, moving like a boss. Yeah. And these Mutas are actually going to circumvent here, trying to come over here and, and hit some of the isolated stalkers. And Chef might actually go for a run by. I'm not sure what those speedlings are going to do. Maybe he's checking for a third. Yeah, he's checking for the third. He may do a run by if he gets the opportunity to. That is a lot of stalkers, though. Um, and Sheth is continuing to make Mutalists. Is that... I, I mean, I'm assuming it's the right thing, but I don't really understand. Well, the reason why you keep making Mutas is if once you get that third base up, if you can just hold that and you keep making Mutas, eventually you can use the Mutas to defend if you need to, but more so you stop making them after a certain point. Then you just keep going to the Paras' base to buy yourself time. And the Paras eventually gets to this point where he has to make the decision, do I just base race with this guy? Because every time I move out, he kills my probes, and then if I go home, I still lose the probes, his mutas escape, and then, you know, just do this little dance for a while, and eventually Paras is like, I actually just have to kill him, and then you end up in a base race. Yeah. And I think that's kind of what Sheth is going for, using these mutas on this map. Shep. Plus, they're starting to cut you off. Plus, with the mutas, um, but the Stalkers can't really be as mobile through these little choke points. Even with Blink, it's very difficult for the Stalkers to kind of walk around there, so the Mutas kind of take precedence there. This is really interesting. I'm not sure what Chef's plan is. Maybe he's going for a, a Protoss sandwich. A, a sandwich? <laughs> uh, sandwich. A sandwich, sorry. <laughs> I keep correcting you on that pronunciation, man. <laughs> well, I'm just... It, to me, it feels like Chef is really buying time. He's he got an extra base. 
and by moving his army on the map, he's just threatening a lot of different things. He doesn't actually have to attack, but right now with San's army so close to his base, he can't really take the, the third. And now we see San's army is really far away, um, does do some damage with the speedlings, and this buys Sheth a lot more time. He's able to take the gold, he gets a drone over there. Um, he'll be able, he might be able to take out that pylon, kill the watchtower. And he uh, is actually going to take that pylon out. We'll get a shot of it in a second here in the middle of the map. There, you go. there it is. Shot of it. And all of this works to kind of delay Sun. Yeah. Sheth doing a very good job of maneuvering his army around the map. And Sun does kick off one, two. Oh, this is not good for Sheth. Um, does get caught, all those lings. Does not get a lot of compensation. Loses three or four mutilists. Um, and that is a lot of stalkers. Yeah, well, lot. there are 72 speedlings in total on the map. He did lose a lot there, but he's got so many more. Just back at his natural. He's actually taking that fourth base over there. Oh, and that gold is going to go down very yeah, soon. Yeah, there's no way he can hold that, unfortunately. Not, not at all. He may decide to try to use his mutilists to do that counterattack I was mentioning, though. And actually, there aren't that many stalkers, this and this is, is really actually interesting. This is a smart move by Sonny. He sends most of his stalkers back home to defend against the inevitable mutilist counterattack. Right. And he sends just enough stalkers to take out that base. Now, Jet's coming over here with these mutas, but Son is going to be prepared for that. And the. The really cool thing about what San did there is because Sheth didn't have an eye on his army, he didn't know where the majority of the army was. So he didn't know, should I go for a base raise? Not a base raise, but should I go counterattack his main? Do I need to send all of my army there? He doesn't know because he doesn't see the army. Um, and we have a Dark Shrine halfway yeah, down. Yeah, the Dark Shrine is going to come into play here pretty soon. It's going to make it very difficult for Sheth to take that gold base. And in addition, it's just going to be very annoying for Sheth to deal with. He's going to have to start making some more spore crawlers. He's going to have to be very prepared. He does have a Spore Caller at every base right now, actually, though, so he is kind of prepared. He doesn't have one in his bottom right base, but he has one in the main hand than that. Another little attack here. Nice Blink Stalker control by Son. Even though he's down on supply, he just hasn't been use losing units. He's just been using them very cost efficiently. Right now, upgrade-wise, Son has 1-1 one, one upgrades for his ground units. Sheth, on the other hand, I'm trying to check, has plus 2 melee attacks and also has plus 2 air weapons, so he's got the upgrade. Uh, the upgrade battle is going in his favor just a little bit. Sheth... Sheth getting the upgrades that allow him to kill things faster. Right. Sheth likes killing things. Yeah, he, he actually seems like a nice guy, but he actually likes to kill things. You haven't seen him at You haven't night. seen him, like, he, like, steps on cockroaches, he sees them on the street, he, like, he doesn't think about it. Like, if an ant comes in his house, he doesn't, like, put on a piece of paper and take it outside, he crushes it. And then he headbutts people. He does. It's terrifying. And it is terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Sheth actually getting scared right now, man. Not only because of the headbutts, because the mutas are in the base of San. They are doing a ton of damage here. That is a huge number of mutas taking out the cannons. Um, and the stalkers are in the base. And Sheth, Sheth is going to see that third. And I don't think... Can we go to the to San's third? No, San does have quite a number of units there. He might be able to snipe that Nexus, but it looks like he's going to just have to back off. Yeah, but meanwhile, meanwhile, DTs have denied the base over at the 9 o'clock position. And in fact... He's killed a lot of drones with those. A lot of drones were transferring over, so they took a lot of hits. And even, even these stalkers are going to come over here and deny the gold base yet again. So, San has secured his own third base, and Sheth might start getting into a little bit of trouble here. Look at that. We have 33 Banelings being morphed right now. Uh, right and it, now. And I would see... It looks like it's going to be Baneling drops. Um, so explain to me, why are we doing Baneling drops against mass stalkers? Well, the problem is the stalkers really have a tendency to clump up and if you're blinking back, the mutas will just keep firing, so you can't blink back forever. And so while you're trying to blink back, the stalkers that stay get hit by banelings, and they're all clumped up, and it gets really nasty. A nice little blink here. Here we see a little bit of engagement. The gold is going to go down. Um, San just doing a very good job of maneuvering. Does not let Sheth take a fourth, and has secured his third in a nice engage in the middle. There it is. That is so many stalkers. Those stalkers want to be bailing. And I think this is it. Sheth is going to do it, kind of. Yeah, his banelings actually came in way too late. Yeah, I'm really confused here. I would really have liked to. Oh, and it looks like Sheth is starting to. Uh, the banelings are coming out, but they're not close enough. Yeah, uh, this is actually what I would like to call choking hard. I mean, that he went for it at the complete wrong moment. It was just a little bit of mistiming, misstepping there. If the Overlords had been with that army when he had engaged, that would have gone a lot better. Um, and it it kind of feels like San is is um, is whittling him down mentally. He's been applying pressure the whole game, moving his army around, forcing Sheth to react. 
and defending quite well against Sheth's advances. And then when Sheth finally gets sick, he's like, you know what, I'm just going to go for it. San is ready, he's in position. Um, it's looking bad. Yeah, I mean, he's still stuck on those three bases. San has taken his own third. He wants to take another base up here at the top left. Get a shot in the second. It is blocked by a Zerglin, though. And, uh oh Sheth actually is in a lot of trouble. He does have a lot of units and here. And the but Banelings are rolling in. Banelings on creep quite fast. The Banelings do a lot of damage here, but I'm not sure it's going to be enough. There's just so many Stalkers on the field right now. Uh, and Sheth, you know, he just had to back away. just didn't have the Mulus count he needed. And these spine callers buying time, but just simply that, buying time. These stock is going to come forward here. Shad's trying to load up some more Banelings, he just doesn't have enough. This is kind of like... Well, this is kind of kind of bad, I don't know what I was going to say. Yeah, just, I mean... I'm just in awe at the number of units here. Um, this is indeed kind of bad, I think Shad may be taken out here. Shad is bringing his drones, a lot of Mutalists here. And the Mutalists, there are so many Mutalists, it looks like... Is San's army going to be clean? Oh, There's a lot of Zerglings coming in here and they are helping out. Speedlings quite good against Stalkers even when they have Blink. The, a lot of Overlords going down. You can see Chef's supply dropping quite quickly, down only 91. But at the same time, San only has 110 supply. Um, and I think actually with these Stalkers coming in, he will clean up the army of Shed. Reinforcements are going to take out the Mutas, but there are more Speedlings streaming in and Chef might actually be able to hold on. Very nice transfuses there. More Mutalists coming in, and the Overlords, the Overlords being Overlordy, and Sun is actually pushed back. That was a fantastic- Oh, but this Archon oh, gonna man, do the so Archon much needs damage. to pull back. Oh man, Sheth Queen's caught off creep, getting a little overexcited there. Um, really needs to regroup before pushing back out. We can see the Queen's grouping up, uh, but the main, the big thing right now that's really tough for Sheth is he's stuck on three bases. Exactly. And that's really one mining base. That's all he's got. And Sheth actually has a Zergling over Doing here at the top very left. very good job, the Zergling. This is a little thing that makes a huge difference. I'm not sure if the Observer saw it, but Sheth does have a uh, burrowed Zergling denying the top, like, top left base of Sheth. Wow, I'm so excited. My voice hurts Calm so much. Calm down, QXC. Just and take I a little break. I'll all right. just talk for you, man. Just do it. Just talk right. a little bit. All right, talk a little bit. Take a sip of water. There are a lot of Archons on the map for San, and that is going to be really difficult for Shet to deal with because he's making Speedlings, Banelings, and Mutas, and guess what does well against all three of those things? It's Archons. And this one DT is just killing all these long distance mining drones. It's not even nice, it's not even fair, it's actually ruthless. And Banelings just do so badly against Archons, and that was a lot of loss of supply. 118 supplies, GG with a trademark smiley from Shet. The Shet San smiley takes game face. one. Sound looks, looks pretty confident. And you sound unbelievable. Looking good. He's just taking a sip of his Gatorade or whatever drink that is. I'm not entirely sure. He hit the label for me. He's keeping it a mystery. Son, he's, he's mysterious. You don't know what he's drinking. You don't know what build he's gonna do. He goes. Well, he starts with a Stargate and just makes a bunch of green stalkers. You just don't expect it. You see Chef. There's a slog and unstable talking to him about that game. And I think if he had just dropped those banelings a little bit better, and that one engagement that I called him choking, because I feel like he just choked. He was like, I think I need to go now. But if he had just waited a few more seconds where his banelings were actually with his army, it would have been fine. But after that engagement went badly, things just went really badly from there. And it's a really hard position to be in. He was. It was basically like 10 or 15 min minutes of maneuvering back and forth across the map where San really controlled most of the pace of the game. San was like, I'm going to poke here, and Sheth was like, I'm going to defend there. San poked here, and Sheth defended there. There weren't a lot of places where Sheth had map control. He was pushing out. He was denying bases. It was just like, San, San's like, I don't want a third base. And then when he wanted a third base, he's like, I'm taking the third. And Sheth was like, all right, take it. I can't do anything. Yeah, and... Shaz going Mutas on that map was a good choice because, like I was saying, there's a lot of different ramps, there's a lot of different narrow pathways, so yeah. the Stalkers can't move around very quickly. Even if they have Blink, you try to Blink all your Stalkers and then like half of them get caught in a weird path and they have to walk around. San did a really good job of splitting his Stalkers up into different groups. He's got the Hatchery Sniping group that makes the ca cancel Hatchery. He's got the Muta Dealing With group. He's got the Annoying the Speedlings group. 
The Muta dealing with group. The Muta dealing with group. You had one of those. Groups, yep. Every good Protoss on that map is going to have to have the Muta dealing with group of stalkers. And that's a very important group of stalkers. We we could call that like the Code S group of stalkers. That has the most important privileges, most important duties, because they are the Muta dealing with group. They're the Muta dealing with stalkers, man. The Muta dealing with stalkers. They're not the stalkers dealing with Mutas. They're the Muta dealing with stalkers. Is that what I said? I don't no, even know. No, that's what I said. Oh, okay. That's what I said, man. They're the Muta dealing with stalkers, not the stalkers dealing with the Mutas. Whatever. <laughs> you know what I mean, right? We right? know. We, Let we, me just, we understand each I'm other. I'm just going to distract you a little bit. I'm, I'm looking at that, man. I'm actually just like, I'm not looking at the camera. I'm looking at your hair. I'm just <laughs> it's pretty nice. It. I like it. It smells pretty nice, man. Does actually, it? I didn't sniff it. No, I just, don't sniff it. I'm, I'm not. I does it I, smell bad? Is that what no, you want me to sniff it? So no, you don't want me to sniff I it? I use the shampoo that they gave us in the gom house. I assume it smells good, but I don't spend a lot of time just... Oh, actually, that is really nice. Yeah, I mean, I, I was kind of smelling it from a distance. I didn't, like, go up and sniff <laughs> it while you weren't looking. I was like, look at that, and I go and sniff your hair. <laughs> hey, what's over there? Oh, hey, what? Don't do that. I won't. I won't. The next you map... You can trust me, QXC. I do trust you. The next map is Crevasse. Zerg versus Protoss. Yeah. It's yeah. a map that I think really goes to both of these player styles quite well. Starting. 